Jesus has really hooked me up. When I met him like five years ago, I was going through a divorce. I was isolated up in Maine in a little cabin in the middle of winter. I mean, I was pretty much on the verge of suicide, dude. I was having a miserable, miserable freaking life. So I was playing around online, saw a website for Rainbow Village. So I called up Jesus and we had like an hour and a half, two hour conversation and uh, we hit it off immediately. And so he said, come on down. So essentially he basically just saved my life. And so I mean, in, in that sense, I owe him quite a bit. And then I met Jesus and that was instant connection. Instant, 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 instant connection. The moment I met that man, he was like the father figure that uh, I never really had, you know? Yeah. And I fell in love with the man, you know? But you believe, you believe in Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. And you'd follow him. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I mean, you'd have to you know, you'd bop me on the head and drag <laughs> me away. <laughs> You feel as though like you've got this burden to spread the, the, his message to other people? I would say that I have no burden at all. Mm. I feel I have a wonderful opportunity to share knowledge and inspiration with people. Did you talk to people about that when you were Absolutely. on the mainland? Mm -hmm. You told them all about what's happening oh, here? Many and... people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was mm -hmm. the, like, the general response? I don't get wrapped up in the doomsday because people aren't gonna hear you. I have a way of kind of pull myself back from maybe the whole, the, the, the part of it that makes you go, ooh, prophecies, ooh, you know, this is a religion, right? you know what I mean? I, I, I tend to try to keep away from that because people just shut down, people just shut down. My goal is to get people to come to the Rainbow Village, come breathe fresh air, and become connected and see what kind of information you start becoming available to. Aloha, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you so much for talking to me, finally. Been searching everywhere for you around here. This place is kind of amazing. This is my most sacred place at Cinderland. You told me that you built this basically from nothing. No, it's a lie. <laughs> uh, we built it from nothing. Yeah. Um, it was me and about a thousand other volunteers, give or take, you know, a few. So tell me, where were you born? I was born in the Yucatan, in Merida. Yucatan, Mexico. Yeah. I was a good boy. I was an ashram boy. You know, I spent ten years in Santa Marga and all the ashrams in India and um, Central America. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's what I did in my twenties. You know. How did you come here? <sighs> here? Yeah. That's a long story. Tell me. <laughs> See, that I'm responsible for everything that happens here. You know. It's a part of you. It is, and it's 15 years old. You know, and yeah. it's evolving. It's it's growing. You know. It's teaching so much to so many people. It's a success story. Thank you. <laughs> you know, in a world of so much failure, this is one of the success stories. Yeah. yeah. I'm really interested in this message that um, you were... I have so much to share with you. <laughs> so much. I'm not going to preach right now to you. I'm going to come from the eye place. I'm going to own what I tell you, you know, take responsibility for it. I believe that my father is the son the heat, the fire, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I believe in the goddess, Pele. They call her Pele here in Hawaii, you know? But it all starts right there with her fire, her fire. This is where things got really weird. I am the Messiah. I am the king. The, the more he warriors. preached, the more manic and theatrical he became. He started working himself up into a fervor, and there was little for me to do but to just stand back and watch the show. I died for my sins. Not a biological death, obviously. And then, finally, we got to the prophecy. I'm a prophet. I believe in my prophecy. I had a vision, a dream of things to come. What did it look like? What did you see? 
I saw the destruction of the entire planet by an ecological apocalypse. <sighs> Millions died of fire. Millions more drowned. They choked, they got smashed by sea surges that wiped out the entire coastline, the whole planet. There's one hope. I'm building an ark to escape environmental apocalypse. Sometime in the very near future, he hasn't set a date, California is gonna break off into the ocean. The tsunami that follows will flood the world, at which point 124 carefully chosen followers will board Jesus's ark and sail to Machu Picchu, which will have become a port city due to all the flooding. There he will establish a home base from which to repopulate the planet with the offspring of his followers. I don't know what to think, you know, like sometimes I get lost. I get lost in your words, you know? Sometimes you make perfect sense and then, I don't know, something happens and I'm, I just like lose you. What, what's going on? The effect I, have on, I had on you, you know, it's the same effect I have on everybody when they first meet me, you know? I've got this speech, I've got this sermon, you know? So when I first meet you, oh, break it down, man. Let's see if you can even, you know, survive my narcissism, you know? And if that doesn't turn you off, you don't leave that day. Now you pass the test. So you feel like sometimes you have to put on a bit of a show? It's a mask. I have two personalities and I'm schizophrenic. I think that sometimes, you know, you're talking about this mask that you wear and it makes you Unreal. a little fake. So then let's be real. Yeah. Do you doubt sometimes? Yeah. You know, I've been called Jesus, you know, since I get to the island. This is 15 years of Jesus and Jesus. And I didn't believe that Jesus Christ had even existed. And I'm like, well, hell, if he didn't even exist, you know? What the hell am I doing, you know? You started doubting yourself. Completely. Were you doubting the prophecies too? I was doubting everything. And I went to go visit my family in LA. I was gonna sell the property. You were ready to give all of this up. Forget it, man. My sister got a jacuzzi and a sauna and a guest house. But I realized I have the responsibility to provide for my followers because they're also coming here because they're searching in the same way that I was searching when I was their age. If what you say is true, it's a lot of suffering about to happen. I mean, how do you think about that? How do you think about your sister, your mother? Don't you feel stressed about what they're facing? You know, you worry, you know, you feel sadness. But what can I do, you know? They don't believe in me. They all think I'm nuts, you know? Está loco! But listen, I mean, most prophets, their families don't accept them. So that's a pretty normal thing, I would say. I'd be blown away if everybody, like, instantly, like, oh, hell to the prophet, you know? But you don't think you're wrong. I don't think so. You ever thought about what would happen if something happened to you? before the prophecy gets fulfilled? I mean, what happens to all of this? Who's gonna, who's gonna succeed you? I've been busy recruiting um, disciples, but most important for me, apostles. They go and preach and come back. Yeah, they always come back. Tell me about the stress that's involved in having to keep all this together, all these people who rely on you. What kind of responsibility do you feel about that? It's hard. It's really hard, you know. I have the responsibility to provide for them food, water, safety, shelter, but you also have to provide spiritually. I feel responsible for their soul. They're there because they believe in my vision. And there's fear that I'm going to let them down, you know. It's hard being a prophet. He can really get passionate, and his passion just runs a little bit hotter than other people's. He may start screaming at times, but that's just because he feels things are imminent. The clock's always ticking, and that's something that a lot of us really don't have, and he's, yeah. <laughs> he's really trying to get us to understand we don't have all day. Generally, Jesus, I mean, he's really grounded. He's a very intelligent person. He's really smart, but when he's really passionate about something, sometimes his emotions kind of get away from him. He, he acts out quite a bit. 
I've known Jesus for years, and even with me, sometimes if I don't do something exactly whatever's in his head, uh, he has a tendency to kind of, you know, kind of flip out just a little bit. Jesus is a lot more unhinged than I expected. We're gonna f make it! Oh yeah, we're gonna make it, Jesus. Yeah? Of course we're gonna make it. Do you believe in the prophecy? Of course I do. Do you believe in the Supreme Commander-in-Chief? I do. Commander of the SS Ark? You're Batman. Okay! Everybody grab a corner right now! No, grab a Corner, you grab the corner over there. So I gotta do everything for you guys. I'm gonna direct this mother. Push. Push. Come on, guys. All right, guys. Plum level and square. Half hitch locks it. Boom. What are you, what are you doing, man? Wait behind you, sir. 